Welcome to Letters to Louis with Abby Algiers. Welcome, Abby. Hi, Sally. We're here uh, in the month of June, towards the end of June, and we have a couple things that we're going to be talking about after your letters. But you're going to be reading two letters that really correlate. Sure. Yeah. And I'm going to have you go ahead and read those, and then I'd like to talk about when they were written. And... Okay. Okay. All right, great. Thanks. Dear Louie, we take so much for granted, awakening in the a.m., getting up, dressing, and going about our chores, and as we age, just going about things. Recently, I've been troubled with symptoms of spinal stenosis, which causes distress, greater distress than I would like to acknowledge. I've sought relief from the low back pain, the radiation in the lower back, down the legs, the fatigue into the mid and low back, and in essence, the pain in the ass. Many years ago, at least, after a long trip to California, I developed a backache. I was treated with epidural steroids and remained quite well until this year of gardening. The garden this year has been great. Beans, lettuce, and later bright red tasty tomatoes. But during the season, I noted a backache which has progressed along with the ripening of tomatoes. And now as I dug up, pulled out the plants, and stooped and hoped that with the cleaning out of the garden, I just might remove the cancer-like claws of the spinal stenosis. Oh, if only it had worked out that way. Associative removal of the low back pain along with the removal of the dried up tomato plants. If only one might associate cause and effect and with the removal of one, a transmission to the effect might result in ablation of the low back syndrome. Poor thinking, I would say. However, if sticking needles, needles into dermatones, the acupuncture avenue of pain relief, works, why can't other mind-convincing methods equally apply? Why, if tending of the crops produces the pain, why not see the pain just go away when the activity ceases? And I believe that might be accomplished. That is, until I looked at the MRI image of my low back. I was astounded. Each morning when shaving, I note a face that I recognize. But when compared to a picture from the past, it's a different face, slowly changing, drooping, and sliding into age-related features. The transition has been so slow and steady that one grows older unaware of the daily gravity pull on the cheeks, forehead, and jowls. The eyes sag, and tears flow and trickle down, not from sadness, but from the gravity pull of the ocular muscle producing the crying of the aged. That's a given, a product of living, a race, a race of length of time, and a fight for survival. It's a given. But let me tell you of the shock of viewing the lower spinal column. I'd like to explain the lack of self-recognition when one gazes at a washed out curvilinear one-on-one -on -one stack of mashed down vertebral bodies. What a shock. What an advertisement for calcium and vitamin D. The pain and discomfort are all explained. The realization sets in and acupuncture, belts, exercises, and even surgical approaches become a probability. All one seeks is time and freedom from pain to seek treatment from the Medicare carrier. And that is where I am this morning. Going in for the second of the epidural triad of injections. Going in with hope and more hope. Having removed the caused, the damn tomato plants, from the equation of causality. So now... As I type this email from a standing position, as sitting is just too damn pain-provoking, I will try to live on and stop the damn bitching about aging. I am so tired of myself, and I'm sure Dorothy is tired of my complaining. So allow me this last moment to bitch age-related changes and smile with the bright sunshine of this day. No more shall I write about aging. I will, as the nuns of St. Killian's would say, Offer it up, <clears throat> Jim. And the second letter follows that. Um, this one's titled, Planning for the Future. Dear Louie, it was a pleasure to have spoken to you yesterday. 
Your voice resonated over the telephone. There was a resilience and quality which was good to hear. I felt that, despite your loss, you were again functioning quite well. Glad to learn that the girls visit frequently along with their animals. I'm beginning to feel the pleasure of being old, a visit from one's children, be it ever so brief. And to think that when the shoe was on the other foot when we were the visitors instead of being visited, we were so casual and many times not attentive. My, how many times it might have made a difference just to spend a few minutes with the folks. This all sets me to think of the social state introduced to us over the past few years, slowly but surely, just a bit at a time. The wheel of aging rolls over all of us if we're allowed to live long enough. Only those who die young are spared the adjustments of aging. I occasionally think of some of our classmates who never were fortunate to have aged, some even to miss the progress of soma and psyche into their late teens. And I suppose those of us who have taken advantage of our investment in Social Security, who have been fortunate to have lived and prospered, now have the benefit of longevity and all that's associated with it, the good and the bad. For the past number of months, my vocabulary has gradually been rekindled, rekindled to include words with meaning. Words such as independent living, assisted living, total care, respite care, family visits, location, finances, and whatever is next. These are the descriptors of aging, along with plots, pre-planning, and daily reading of the obits. It seems as though the writing today is more depressing, and it probably is. But the theme is so real and is easily overlooked and ignored. Since my last letter, or at least since one of the last letters, one in which I describe my back pain, I've thought about the future. I've allowed myself to speak to the issue of ongoing care, of living locations, room sizes, meals on wheels, home assistance, and of homes. I've become more familiar with future planners of care centers, of campuses, and of the questions which plague all those who are in fair health but are aging. It's time for planning, for the review of plans which have been made, and for thoughts that were discarded. I well recall the nursing home on North Main Street in the late 50s. It was an old folks home on the first floor and consisted of three rooms, eight old women aged 68 to 79, all seated in reed-backed wheelchairs with large clum clumsy wheels, high backs, and lap straps. Imagine six clumsy wheelchairs, six beds in a row, tucked around the room's periphery and cold linoleum floors. For meals, three times a day, they were wheeled to the dining area, placed around the large central table, bibbed and fed, fed a nutritious meal of, me of potatoes, meat, salad, pie, and coffee. The calories were adequate, the rooms surprisingly clean, and the floors were cold. Three women attended, wheeled the ladies to the lawn in the summer, and attended all with care and interest. Mrs. Wenzel, the proprietress, was aggressive, interested in all, and knowledgeable about families and situations. The patients were attended to very nicely and seemed happy, despite a few state requirements. The average age was about 72. Few reached 75 or 80. The appearance was of age, and the description was of childish ladies. The medical literature was just beginning to speak to Alzheimer's aging and memory loss and confuse, confusion in the elderly. Old folks became childish, and then came slow progress, slow but progressive. We in the area were most fortunate. We sat near the incubator of care for the elderly. And then change came in the form of the Cedar Lake Nursing Home under the directorship of the Reverend Lewis Reich. He was an early genius in long-term care in the infancy of organized progressive care for the elderly. As far as this area is concerned, the Reverend and the increasing number of elderly was the perfect storm care setting for the elderly. Certainly more homes came aboard as the number of elderly increased. 
but locally and with some national influence, Reich was the leader, and that leadership has continued for the Cedar Lake campuses, a marvelous pace-setting institution. Recently, I have investi I've investigated long-term care facilities and now encourage the elderly to learn more about care options. Not all facilities are created equally or are managed carefully, securely, and empathetically. As we age, as chronic illness begins to affect our lives, we must make changes in living arrangements. Many plans for these eventual changes, but many do not. A whole new vocabulary of terms enters our planning schemes. Terms to describe concepts of institutional care, independent living arrangements, personal care, assisted living, senior care, of home care, all enter the conversation of living and plans have been planned. Many words are spoken, many plans are made, but just like downsizing, not all turned into action. Some seniors are successful in planning to move into easier managed living quarters, but I subscribe to most plans and move only when forced by circumstance forcing change. And so, Louie, on the days of low back distress, the stimulus for change is present, but as the days warm, as the grass greens, as the earth blooms, the golf clubs have greater attraction than the action of downsizing for future moves. So, my friend, we await sp spring and fear the winter, which will come again. Some things are inevitable. Keep the faith, Jim. So the first letter, was Louis alive then? Louis was alive, and his wife had just passed. Okay, and then the second letter is when he talked with him on the phone. Correct. Okay. Yes. Um, Another reason why you're here is we want to talk about the uh, Medical Center Foundation and what a um, great foundation it does and, mm -hmm. and really helps elderly or people that have disabilities get from point A to point B. And what I'm holding here is the flyer for now it's called the Algiers Goldbug Classic Drive for Rides. And that is going to be on July 11th. Correct. Starting at 10, tea off at noon, and it's a scramble. Correct. Okay. Correct. And it's all, there's also a dinner if, if people don't want to golf. There's a dinner. Right. Um, so if everyone is interested in finding more information about this, how would they do that? They can go to the Medical Center Foundation website, uh -huh. um, and they can also call. There, I think there's a number on that flyer. Let's take a look <laughs> if there's a number on here. Uh, and uh, six seven zero seven five six eight. Okay. Or MCF. Hartford.org. Now, interestingly, he, again, his words, I just, I love the writing style and the fact that you're able to relay this to our viewers. Right. I totally could visualize that senior home and, and the few number of people. Right. Whereas now we have the big Cedar Lake campus facility that takes you from independent to maybe needing more help to completely um, needing help and how all of the industry has grown in that area because we're living longer. Right, right. Yeah. And I think there were probably fewer in the 50s because the elderly might have lived at, with their families. Right. You know, just how things have changed. Right. Um, and then just with COVID, how everything changed even more. Right. Um, so, yeah, just his insight into, mm -hmm. you know, the planning that needs to go on, no matter what, if you're in the 50s or now. Right. And he was very instrumental in starting the Medical Center Foundation for a lot of these reasons. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's really important to mention that in his memory. Um, both your parents were heavily mm -hmm. involved with that. And what a wonderful way to give back to the community that gave to him during his practicing years. Right. Right. Yeah. And even um, the Goldbugs started to raise money for... Um, an Alzheimer's center for a daycare center for patients who needed care during the day. So it's kind of like now it's graduated to supporting people who need um, rides to their medical appointments. So it's nice to see that evolution as well. And it's great to know that these resources are there 
for people that really need them and that don't have the care, as we had said prior, with family taking care of them. Right, right, exactly. Fantastic. So, yeah. I appreciate you coming in. Thank you. And yes. very wonderful letters again. Thank you. You're welcome. And to our viewers, as always, thank you for watching.